there's some cards in this game that really need a, a fix. And they have it! They, they literally made exactly the right fix. This is exactly what this card should have said. And then they, they actually unfixed the card. I don't think that's precedented in anything in this game where they literally made the card perfect and then they, <laughs> they screwed it up. Pardon my French. What's going on everybody? This is Fry. So today another tier list. We're doing the smarty class Not the greatest plant class, but it does have obviously have some gems in it and thank you so much pizza pizza master I don't know what the heck happened to Streamlabs oh You're so annoying. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing really appreciate it. Anyway guys, let's just get right into the tier list uh, doing the smarty class now of course i'm going to be rating these cards uh mostly based on how viable they are to include index when you're playing on the highest level of the game i'll give some points for more budget players lower level of the game and also give some points for how fun the card is uh, etc but it's mostly going to be how much do we actually include this index in the highest level of the game now uh, i do plan on doing the rest of the tier uh the rest of the classes uh so i believe it's just this one and beastie is going to come after that that'll be the classes i'll do a tier list of the classes themselves of the heroes themselves of the tribes in this game like beans etc if you have any creative ideas please let let me know in the comment section below again please don't ask me to uh just rank all the legendary cards in the game because they're going to end up back on the same tier list as they were when I explained the cards in their respective classes, etc. So see if you can come up with something uh, original that's going to have very different criteria All gonna be D -class than we are doing on this. And thank you so much, Aita Nursa. Really appreciate it. It's 28 months. Long time viewer. All right. Let's go. Uh, I'm going to start off with Admiral Navy Bean. Admiral Navy Bean is a very solid card. It is sort of the... Um, just the engine of one of the stronger synergies in the game, which is Bean Synergy. Uh, you, this will do a lot of damage if it goes unanswered, so it's obviously very weak to small removal and to field clear, uh, but there's a lot of heroes that don't do that well, or maybe they won't have that. And, or, and you can also combo Admiral Navy Bean instead of playing it on turn one and relying on the opponent not to have small removal for this to stay on the field. Uh, rather, you can just play this later and then combo a whole bunch of little beans afterwards. There are some very uh, good smaller beans uh, in this game, particularly, let's say, in Cycle Cap, this is one of the main ways you can stick this into uh, Planet of the Grapes. And uh, that will, every single time this does damage to your opponent's face, you'll draw a card and then keep playing cards, etc. You do that with Astro Shroom. Uh, again, you don't have to be doing this in Cycle Cap, though. It works with Green, Sh Green Shadow. We just put up a deck on Frymup Gaming called Bean Shadow. It's actually really good. Uh, so you do have that synergy. Also, is just a very good synergizer with some of the other Bean Synergy cards. Uh, in this game, particularly Jelly Bean, because it does give you that little one cost guy uh, to be a springboard uh, evolution target for your Jelly Bean, which will bounce something off the field. Don't be too afraid of doing that, even to your Admiral Navy Bean, if you don't have a better target, because the value of bouncing a zombie, a very powerful zombie off the field, is huge. Plus, uh, when you play Jelly Bean onto Admiral Navy Bean, the Admiral Navy Bean's power will actually activate for the Jelly Bean for playing a bean. That's just how game mechanics work. Uh, I will be putting this in A tier because it is a very strong card. It's part of some very top tier decks. Beans in general are strong. Again, they have some weak ma matchups, but they're in general very strong in this game. And uh, let's move on to uh, Iceberg Lettuce. So Iceberg Lettuce, you're never really going to end up seeing this in any deck that is not a freeze deck. Even in freeze decks, I guess it's a really strong card. It will buff up your, uh, not only make a, like a good trade, because, you know, if they have a guy in the field, you have a guy in the field, it'll freeze theirs. Theirs does not do damage. Yours does. It'll grow your um, Snowdrop. It will also grow your... Uh, it'll also activate the Winter Squash. Very cheap way of activating Winter Squash. Uh, since this does cost four, it's a little bit of an expensive card. Comboing this with one cost freezes is really important. Uh, so it's okay. Uh, you're really, again, not going to see this in any deck except for freeze decks. Because on the plant side... Uh, instead, if you really just need that sort of idea of you have a zombie and a plant in the same lane and you want your guy to be doing damage and their guy not to, there's a lot better op better options than Iceberg Lettuce, particularly in this class you have Shellery because you can really just put a team up in front and that will have a very similar effect. I know they can answer the Shellery th theoretically, but uh, this also ends up adding two damage to your side of the field. Uh, even free cards, let's say like uh, in other classes, 
like Puff Shroom and Lil Buddy, which are actually for free, will also have sort of that same uh, cumulative effect. So you're not really going to end up uh, really running Snowdrop in any deck besides for Freeze decks. I guess uh, because Freeze decks are pretty strong, I, I think I'm really going to end up <laughs> putting most of the Freeze cards just in B because, again, it's not the top tier of the game, but it's fine. Can't really put it in C because it is part of a very strong deck. Uh, so that's just where we're going to leave it. Oh my goodness. Lilypath. <laughs> Lilypath, thank you so much, Bernard, the best, for subscribing three months. Lily Pet is not a good card. This is such a flawed idea. Like, I'll tell you the real problem. I feel like if Lily Pad had been a Mega Grow card, it would actually be so good because Mega Grow doesn't have any amphibious plants. So do what Lily Pad, like Lily Pad was so cool in the original Plants vs. Zombies that you're able to take non-amphibious plants and then make them amphibious. And But the Smarty class just does not benefit <laughs> from that at all because like what do you actually need in the smarty class to be amphibious which card benefits so much from being there so you, it only is going to synergize with another class and then you have green shadow but it just ends up being so few applications the fact that you would have a hero which otherwise uh does not have any amphibious minions like captain combustible you know if this was a mega card and it enables that hero because of lily pad to have amphibious the amphibious lane having like access to a whole lane now i feel like that would have been much smarter for lily pad uh, also being in the same class as savage spinach would have just given it this natural synergy again because it is like a leafy card a uh, really good way to upgrade the savage spinach now savage spinach again unless you're with green shadow just does not have access to the lily pad um there's that just lily pad also so it, again it's one do cards really benefit that much uh, from being amphibious. I feel like that's the real problem with this, and it seems like they don't. I feel as a zero-cost card, th this this probably would have been worth it. Because once again, you're running this card in your deck. It does conjure you a leafy card. So you're getting a worse card than you otherwise would have ran in your deck. Because again, now all the leafy cards are great, and they're certainly not necessarily going to work in your deck. So it costs you a card. It shouldn't cost you anything, and then you're able to, because of that sacrifice of having run this in your deck in the first place, you get one guy to be amphibious. I feel like that would have been actually good at zero cost. Right now, it usually adding, uh, sacrificing a whole sun to make one of your guys amphibious, it, it being so circumstantial, usually doesn't matter. The main way of, the main advantage of amphibious is that they can't put a minion, like the zombies won't be able to put a minion in front of it, which is anyway a bad idea for zombies to do. Zombies never want to be controlling by sticking their minions in front of the opponent's minions be, unless they're teleporting them in. Uh, because that will only control what they played the turn before, since the plants have last say when it comes to minions. The next turn they can control on turn 5, they can stick a minion in front of their 4 drop, and now the plants can play a 5 drop, which is even stronger. Uh, it's just a really, really flawed creation. It's, it's it, it doesn't really have... I mean, we've had a, a little bit of fun with it. Uh, I'm sorry, this is going to have to go in F tier. Not a good card at all. Lima Pluridon is an extremely good card, and I'm actually going to be putting Lima Pluridon even higher than Admiral Navy Bean, and I'll tell you why. Well, every deck with four Admiral with Admiral Navy Bean is always going to have four copies of Lima Pluridon, but there are a lot of decks with Lima Pluridon that do not include Admiral Navy Bean. Lima Pluridon is not just a cheap bean. It is a very, very solid turn one control card because it can it, it really will remove basically anything the zombies play i know gladiator and like con man uh, are exceptions which are anyway just really difficult cards but like anything they play in the field this is going to answer plus it also answers the amphibious lane so even like toxic waste and pun too this is a one cost answer to that so this is uh, it's almost sort of like banana bomb but it's a minion uh, and certainly on turn one it's that way because they're not going to be able to answer it. Plus, besides for being a very good control card to answer the early game, you can also develop this as sort of an aggro or tempo card. Even in later turns after turn one, uh, if you have one extra sun, sticking a Lima Pluridon in the water lane is usually a pretty good idea. So that's the reason why... Uh, th th this is really includable. I, it, almost every Smarty deck, if you have four copies of Lima Pluridon, I, I almost can't argue with that in any deck. I mean, this sort of has become auto-include uh, for that reason. Again, Tempo Aggro, that little bit of damage does add up. Plus, the Dino War with the Magic Beanstalks, even though in most times you play Lima Pluridon, you're not going to end up getting any Magic Beanstalks that, day, that game. But every once in a while, that Magic Beanstalk, you know, this will... If they keep this on the field and don't answer it for a few turns, the, the you know, the Dino Roars will add up and you will start getting Magic Beanstalks. And once you even get that first 
Magic Beanstalk, getting a one cost four four. It puts you so far ahead of tempo. Uh, Lime Plurodon is a really uh, very very good card. If someone even wants to if you play a bunch of smarty heroes, if that's your thing, and you know you want this to be your legendary of choice to craft, uh, I can't even argue with that because it really is useful in basically every single smarty deck. It's almost like the plant food uh, of the smarty class in terms of how often. It is included. Is this, is this animal plant? Oh my gosh, why did they do that? Anyway, <laughs> fine, never mind. It's going in. I'm <laughs> no, joking. Um, Mars Fly Trap. I've tried to use this in aggro decks. It seems like there's always a better option when than Mars Fly Trap. It's not even like a one cost two attack bullseye, which I feel like would have been better probably than its ability because this is only like a partial bullseye. I mean, it does give you one extra block meter. It also doesn't, this ability does not activate if their block meter is full. I mean, if this gets blocked, it doesn't steal anything. Uh, that's why uh, a one cost two, two bullseye would have been better. Um, I, I, again, in aggro decks, there just seems to be better options in this game, putting something amphibious, a card like Shelly, which we're gonna get to a very underrated aggro card. Um, you know, in the other classes, just compare this to one cost aggro cards. If you're going for, with an aggro strat, Go with a good good classes that actually have good aggro cards. Just compare it to Blooming Heart that grows every turn and accumulates so much damage. Um, even <laughs> just like, you know, one cost two, two bullseye, like Galactic Cactus. Uh, cards like Haunted Pumpkin, obviously, are way better. So, I, I just, I, I feel like this card is okay, but it really, because, it doesn't have, like, a deck to really land in. It doesn't, like, have a place uh, in the game. Because, again, this is different than Monkey. Monkey's ability automatically activates. This one needs to hit your opponents. The actual zombie hero in order to activate, if it gets blocked um, or removed, it, it doesn't do anything. So, uh, it, it just doesn't have a place in the game. It's not, you're not going to really put this in your control decks, not going to put this in your tempo decks, and you're really not going to include this in your aggro decks. Uh, and for that reason, even, even though it, it's okay, it has decent stats, has a cool ability, we're going to have to stick this uh, in D tier. All right, here is Primal Pea Shooter, which is probably a much better card than I than the amount that I even included in decks. I mean, this is a one cost bounce. I know this can be answered, but this is a uh, anyway. The time you want to bounce something is when they put a very powerful zombie on the field, which they're not necessarily going to be having a lot of brains in order to be able to remove your Primal Pea Shooter. I mean, this this is a really really strong removal card. Uh, it's peace synergy probably doesn't add that much i don't know maybe we can do like a removal in the early game and then try to do a gatling p combo and that would be a green shadow it's not really not a bad idea should probably try a p green shadow sort of mid-range control deck with gatling kind of like that idea probably sure it's just a perfect target sort of for your gatling p uh, in the late game it's a one cost two two also i mean it's it has decent stats and its ability is kind of it's probably might have the one of the best abilities for a one cost card in the game uh where do we put this i don't run this card a lot but it's so good it's freaking great card oh uh why don't we end up including this in a lot of decks i guess control is very good usually the bounce decks you want more beans but this is a very good bounce card this is like low A or high B. I think I agree with you guys. Uh, I'm just going to put it in B. I, I, I actually don't know why I don't run this more. I guess I don't necessarily run the Smarty class very much unless I'm doing Cycle Cap. But uh, I think this is overall an extremely solid card. I'll put a very high B tier. Here's Shellery. This is, I think, one of the more underrated cards in the game. Whenever I run Shellery in a deck, people are like, Fry, why do you have Shellery? It's so mad. It's such weak stats. It's actually really, really good stats. Uh, as a aggro card this will add two damage into a lane so this is almost like a one cost two one bullseye that will protect it'll either add two damage bullseye because again it, it doesn't charge your block meter when you have team ups attacking at the same time uh so it, this really doesn't add anything to the block meter if it is teamed up which usually that's where you're gonna put it so in some situations it's like a two it's this equivalent of a one cost two damage bullseye uh, in some situations, it's a really good tempo card because you're able to keep one of your stronger minions uh, on the field using the Shellery. So a very good aggro card, very good tempo card. Control, maybe not so much, but it, it definitely it definitely could be could be useful in that way. Uh, Leafy Synergy, again, is not even very good in this game. Uh, where are we going to put Shellery? I'm also considering putting it in A tier, A tier or B tier. 
Uh, this is a this is a, a very very decent card. Probably in terms of the amount of decks you actually run this on the highest level of the game. The game again, we're probably going to put this in B. Uh, it definitely is better than C though. This is an extremely underrated card. And again, B, B means it's a solid card, and uh, that is that is where it belongs. Maybe even high B. All right, here's next snowdrop. So again, this is only useful in one deck. <laughs> it applies to you know all the smarty heroes. You can just run freeze. Freeze is mostly good with Green Shadow and Rose because they have a big chill ability. You're really sort of limited otherwise in terms of the amount of freeze cards that you have. But again, those decks are just decent. I'm not going to say they're the best decks in the game. They're the best decks in the game in some matchups because they're so annoying. If you don't have a way to answer the snowdrops and the winter squashes and stuff like that, it's going to be they're going to be really strong. If you do have answers, it's going to be really weak. Or if you don't get your combo. I found something about snowdrop that... I find they tend to be a bit of a liability sometimes because even if you're running a freeze deck, how many freezes do you actually have? You have like your big chill, your four iceberg lettuces, like sometimes your cool beans will activate, not always. You're typically not going to be running snow pea in those decks. I'll explain that later. You have like Jolly Holly, but Jolly Holly, if you're going to even combo that with one snowdrop, yeah, that has to be a turn six combo. You're not always going to have your Jolly Holly. Um, so I, I again, I, I find that sometimes even not even running four of these in a freeze deck, I find like three is usually safer, but you can run four. It's okay. Again, it's just going in B tier, it's a part of a very strong strategy, but it's only in one deck ar archetype, and it's not even, like, the best deck in the game. All right. <laughs> People on Ice Age Baby just to be freaking... <laughs> Fine, we're keeping it here. It's in Communist Russia tier. Ha ha ha. In Communist Russia, Ice Age Baby kills you. And thank you so much, Noland Iran Irard. Welcome to the Prime Late. Really appreciate it. Is that ringing or not? Yeah, it is. All right. Keep it going. Do I, have I had the music on this whole time? Oh my gosh, why did I have the music on? That's horrible. No one told me. This is all your fault. No, I just had my speakers down really low for some reason. All right, next. Spirus. Spirus is an extremely, extremely sad card. This, right when this came out, this was actually pretty good because you had a, again, same thing as Lima Pluridon. You had a one cost, two attack. It can be done in the amphibious lane. It answers toxic waste damage. It actually was just sort of a jack of all trades, sort of just like first, you know, turn one control card for the Smarty class, which I loved. Uh, but then Lima Pluridon came out and made this card basically unplayable. Guys, this is this ability is so overrated people are like you play gravestone and then they play spires they're like oh i know what it is listen if you need to spend one whole sun just knowing what their gravestone is you have less sun to now actually answer it and make a good play every once in a while knowing is it a pogo is it a trap or is it a you know a tomb raiser like knowing the difference between a tomb raiser and a pogo are sometimes very good in this game, but usually both of those cards you're just going to front. If there's a Gravestone, unless it's Smelly Zombie, you're basically always going to try to put something in front of it. It's just the way that it works. Line Dancing Zombie also has a lot of different options in other lanes, so you don't want him to have those options, so you front it. Basically, every Gravestone in the game, a <laughs> mystery Gravestone get fronted anyway. You kind of have to know what... Look at your opponent's deck. The main way to Spirus yourself without Spirus is to look at your opponent's deck and know what the most likely gravestones are going to be running. You see that a lot when I'm up against gravestone decks. I'll make predictions. I, I would say about 80% of the time, I never run Spirus. I never ever run Spirus in any deck. And 80% of the time, basically, we we know what gravestone it is. And the amount of, even of that 20% that we're off, it's, we're usually not off to the point where it was such a big mistake and such a huge misplay. And that it would have been worth investing a whole deck slot and one sun in Spirus in order to know that have that knowledge usually even in those situations where we're wrong it wouldn't have been worth it to be right so uh Spirus is actually uh it, it's it, it's 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 completely unplayable thank you so much spider claw welcome to the family this card is actually unplayable right now because of lima pluridon and very often Cards that are like, well, it's so outclassed, but it has some uses. No, this actually doesn't have any uses. And unfortunately, Spirus is going in F tier. And part of it is just because of how people completely, com they, they, they just substitute being good at the game for having a, a, a dumb, this is a great card for, for players who suck at PFC Heroes. <laughs> That's basically all this is. I know it has flower and root synergy, so great. So now it's good with, with exactly in Rose. It's not even good with Briar Rose, and it's not, Star Lord isn't a good card. Anyway, guys, got him. All right, Weenie Beanie, easily going. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that again. We did it for Swabby. I ain't doing it again. 
Uh, but what I will say about Weenie Beanie being OP is that it actually is, it actually is quite OP for a one cost one one for that base card because it is a bean and beans uh, actually have uh, m almost really more synergy than any of the other one ones probably in this game. I know we gave backup dancer like D tier, uh, but with Admiral Navy Bean. Again, for high-level players, when you have your Lima Pluridons, there's no business ever running Weenie Beanie in any deck. But for low-level players, you really could justify running Weenie Beanie. Even Budget Cycle Cap, you really do need an extra bean there. And for Budget Cycle Cap, I could uh, understand why one would run uh, Weenie Beanie because you're never going to use... I mean, if they put something with one health, a powerful guy like a Cuckoo Zombie, which who the heck runs Cuckoo Zombie? I guess you can use this to remove that, but otherwise, you're really just going to be using this to activate your Admiral Navy Bean. And again, it's uh, one cost, two damage to face, block one of your opponent's minions. It's, it's actually not a horrible card. And for that reason, because it's so S-tier, it's so OP, I think just for the memes, we're going to put this in C-tier. <laughs> <laughs> it's guys this is pretty op if it's a one cost one one it's in c tier everyone unsubscribes how is it not an s tier i don't know all right bog bog i believe used to cost three when it came out which was way too expensive any any um <laughs> what is weenie beanie's actual um it prefers to be called vertically challenged beanie okay Never mind. That didn't score at any points at all. Bog of Enlightenment. Now, uh, this used to cost three. It was not very good at three because, again, this doesn't. It doesn't actually do very much. Even like Solar Winds, at least it's creating you sunflowers. Now, this at two, I think, is actually a pretty good environment because uh, this it, it works together with your amphibious means to buff it. But more importantly, it sort of nerfs. Uh, the zombie is from doing damage to you. So it can take a two attack zombie and completely negate it. Even better, it can take a three attack zombie and make it do one damage to your face every single turn. If your opponent is pinging your face for one uh, per turn over a long time, it's just going to charge your block meter, give you a lot of superpower. So it is decent, sort of decent as a control card. Again, it, it's not that good because it's 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 not like the, the damage is done in one turn unless you, are, you know, put like a... Uh, a really, really good amphibious minion like like Rotobega will say. We'll put a Rotobega in this and you're able to just do a ton of damage. Then you've sort of gotten your value, so then it becomes okay when Bog of Enlightenment gets covered. But, you know, uh, just one turn reducing two damage, uh, it's almost like healing your face for two. It's almost like Lil Buddy's ability if this will get removed the next turn, which very often it will. Again, it is a plant environment. Sometimes this will get removed the turn you play it too, so plant environments are always worse. Um, so it, it doesn't, the, the, the amount of damage that this, the amount of value this gave you from the time you play it until the time it gets covered is actually very limited. And that's the reason why, uh, it's less good. Uh, it also, again, if you don't have any amphibious minions in your deck, maybe you could justify running this just to charge your block meter. Maybe just to get a good shrinking violet. It sort of has that synergy. Very, very hard to pull off the bog shrinking violet synergy because if you pass turn, you know, I mean, you have to play this on two, you pass turn four, uh, it, you're usually not going to be able to pull this off, uh, the, actually, to get a really, really strong minion within range of Shrinking Violet. Anyway, most of the things they're playing on turns one and two uh, are not going to have more than two attack, uh, just the majority. We're we going to put Bog, I'm going to say it's just a solid B tier card, can't really put it much higher than that, can't put it lower either. All right, here's Cosmic Bean. This this really might be the best Cosmic card in the game, and not because of that, you know, conjuring a random bean with team up is very good. It's just because it's a bean. I mean, this is a really, really good combo card with Admiral Navy Bean and really any bean deck. Uh, again, it's a little sad if you haven't played anything on one and this is all you have on turn two. This can stall for time. It doesn't really cost you a card. It costs a lot sort of for what it does. But again, being, if you have Admiral Navy Bean, the fact that you have a bean, which first of all is team up. So you'll, you know, it won't clog a lane. And then it gives you another bean, which also won't clog a lane because that has team up. Uh, it just enables you to be playing a lot more beans in sort of a combo turn with your Admiral Navy Bean. It sort of makes it a valuable um value valuable card and really any admiral navy bean deck you're usually not running this in any deck except admiral navy bean this could combo okay let's say with like a card like onion rings because then it'll be a 4-4 team up which will also conjure a card if you play it earlier it won't cost you a card out of your hand uh in order for the onion ring to buff it most things most beans will be buffed very very well by onion rings it will be a you know a very low cost 4-4 team up 
Uh, so you can sort of use this as some kind of stalling tactic. But again, it's mostly Admiral Navy Bean. Uh, I'm just going to put this General in B class. <laughs> just with everything else in this Marty. It's, it's just okay. Um, I don't think Grave Mistake is as good as Grave Buster because one of like the main things you really want to use Grave Buster uh, on, it, it, I would say the number one card, the number one card that you want, the number one Gravestone card that is just a, such a huge threat uh, is Pogo. You you really if you this is like this answers Pogo so well. If you bounce Pogo back into their hand, okay, so now you have an extra two Sun in which to develop some tempo. That's something. I mean, you definitely made sort of a good trade. I know you drew a card, so it didn't cost you a card either, but they're just going to be able to play that Pogo the next turn, which is going to, whatever you were trying to play, whatever plant, Bananasaurus, Rex, Gatling P, whatever you were trying to play on turn four or turn five, whenever the Pogo comes out, uh, and it, you know, it messed that play up. You're not going to be able to play that usually together uh, with a gray flick, you're gonna have to wait till the next turn, and the next turn they're gonna have that pogo again, so you're still gonna be screwed. It's sort of just what cards do pogo answer uh, is 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 why the gray flick is not as good. Now, again, this can be good against other things besides pogo. Obviously, this can hit a mixed up grave digger. This can hit. Uh, what are like the real problem? Like, I guess if you use this on a um, on a binary stars or on a surprise guard, you've obviously gained a lot of tempo. So. It's fine. It's just sort of outdone by Grave Buster. I know not every Smarty, obviously the only Smarty hero that has access to Grave Buster are going to be Beta and uh, Citron. So again, have a little bit of Grave Removal. I don't know. Here's the problem with Grave Removal in this game. Grave Removal is good, but it also is is a very big expense. If you run gra even Grave Buster in a deck and you're up against like Valtrixter Hybrid, you're up against that really doesn't have Gravestones or doesn't have any very important Gravestones, the card is dead weight. It's dead in your hand. It, it will give you such a disadvantage because you just have this automatic card disadvantage. So you need the upside of a card like Grave Buster or Grave Flick to be way, way past the downside, uh, uh, you know, the risk. It has to be a high, if it's going to be high risk, it's got to be high reward. And again, I don't think the reward because bouncing a Grave I don't think the high reward is really worth it uh, with this card because, again, it can be played the next turn. Um, especially since, in my opinion, the main thing you really got to answer is Poe. Again, if they play a two-cost card, you bounce it back into their... If you, the fact it draws a card doesn't make that much difference because you're also drawing your opponent a card. They get that card back in your hand. As opposed to Grave Buster... It doesn't draw you a card, but it doesn't draw your opponent the card that they just played, which, again, against Pogo is just way better. Uh, I don't think this is very good. It also is somewhat outclassed by Cool Bean, even though this doesn't actually answer Pogo, but this does answer Mix Up Grave Digger and basically all the other Gravestone threats that are not exactly Pogo, this is a better answer to, besides for not being dead weight in, in, your, in your deck, because if they have no Gravestones, this is still a 3 cost 3 3, which is a decent stat card and can actually be doing decent damage, decent control, decent tempo. Um, so, yeah. That's the reason why I really don't run a lot of grave mistakes, and I'm I'm kind of just I don't think it's a bad card. I personally don't like it. I'm just gonna put it in C. Next, laser cattail. This is such a, I mean I don't think it's that overrated of a card. I know there are some people who overrate this card very much. This is not a good card, guys. A two cost two one. Think about it. When are you playing this? On turn two, this is so bad because it's just again it's a Two cost card, it just dies to everything. Any little nibble, it sort of has that problem like Lily of the Valley and, and uh, you know, Doubled Mint that just dies to just every control card in the game. I know that this doesn't die to beat me up because you can play it in the water, but again, most classes will have some way. Most decks will have some way to deal with Laser, ba laser Cattail on two. If you're going to be playing this on three, so you're going to have to be comboing this. Like if you're playing it on the ground, you're going to have to have exactly a one drop to combo with it. And then it's a two cost two. Th like if you're playing on the ground, it's two cost three, two, which is very, very average for a two cost card. If you're playing it in the amphibious lane. So now you need there to have not only a one cost plant, but that plant has to be exactly an amphibious plant, which very limits the amount of combos, like in terms of deck building that you can include this with and also limits situationally, even if you're running eight one cost amphibious minions, like a bean deck or something. 
Um, you're, you, you, in that sort of deck, you're typically not going to be wanting to run Leisure Cattail in the first place. Um, Simo answers this. There's there's a lot of there a lot a lot of problems. It, it, it is too slow. It this card it looks like it has a lot of potential, but it really doesn't because its development is way too slow. Once you put that team up card, the only way for this to grow, even an additional one one over that two cost three two, which becomes sort of like an average stat card, circumstantial average stats, and then in order to activate the second time, your opponent has to actively remove the, uh, the the team of minion off the field and why would they be removing your lime of pluridon and not just remove your laser cattail which will end up being the higher stat card at that point <laughs> that's really it's just sort of a just overall very very flawed card uh i wish this was like every time you played an amphibious minion this would grow by one one something like that that it wasn't relying on it being in in, in in its actual lane i feel like that could almost make amphibious deck sort of as a category be better if 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 that was this this ability sort of just making that up on the spot right now uh don't really think don't really think this is a good card i don't even know when this I, it's not horrible you can aggro amphibious even in amphibious decks i'm typically not running cat I'll, I'll just stick it in d it's it's very very sad guys this this might be the worst card in the game <laughs> Might be the worst plant. It's not as bad as Firefighter. What is this? Guys, Lightning Green was a really cool card in PvZ too. I mean, a really cool card. What is this crap? So you're putting this, <laughs> it's a two cost, one attack. So you're pinging your opponent's block meter for one every turn. The thing only has two health. So, oh, right. So you have that. all those downsides. Now, what's the upside? Splash damage one. Splash damage one is crap. This, what are you removing with this? What's the play? What did they play on turn one and two that only has one health? This is just going to be insta answer to it. Like they're going to play like 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 Cosmonaut or whatever it's called. One cause Disco Knot. Like what has one? This is so bad. <laughs> this is so. <laughs> this is such crap. Is this worse than Cosmic P? This is probably worse than Cosmic P. To be honest, I think this is really the 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 actual worst plant in the game. Fishy Imp. Guys, it's a great answer, Fishy Imp. <laughs> Not a lot of Fishy Imps in the meta. And even then, you just have this piece of trash on the on the field charging your opponent's block meter. Might almost be worth it for the zombie if you play this against Fishy Imp. I'm serious. So easy to remove. So useless. This is just going into Communist Russia tier. Oh my gosh. What a horrible card. How would I fix this? How about Splash Damage 2? I think Splash Damage 2 would make all the downsides. It still wouldn't be a great card. It would be... It would be a viable control card. It would almost be like you, on turn two you have Lightning Ring, Lightning Reed, and then on turn four you have Snapdragon. Almost be like a Snapdragon Light. I feel like its light stats would make up, you know, I mean, if it had splash damage. I don't think this would be OP at, at splash damage too. I think it would be it would be a viable way of sort of of of, of crowd of crowd controlling. An unreliable way. Again, Nibble answers this because it doesn't even attack if it gets nibbled. But uh it would be a, it would be a good answer to like aggro swarm, maybe a good combination with cards like Snapdragon. I, I I think that would be fine, even if it was a two two. Maybe if it was a two cost two two, at least it's not pinging your opponent's block meter for for one at a time. I don't even know if it would be good. All right, here's Pear Pal. It's just a two cost two two. <laughs> Compare this to Lime of Pluridon. Having Amphibious does not make the card cost one more. <laughs> and Team Up, sorry, having Team Up, I mean, does not make a card cost one more. That's not, that's not how this, that's not how this game works. Uh, it's completely, com an utterly outclassed by Lime of Pluridon. There's almost no deck ever, even Amphibious decks. There's no time you're ever running, Parapel. I'm sorry. You're going in F tier, dude. All right, here's Roto Vega. This is a uh, this card is like this is almost the best example in the game of a card which is so great and so trash. It's so high risk and also so high reward. The, the amount of value you get from Roto Vega, this is almost what Electric Ring should have been. I mean, you can get get this on the first of all. This is a two cost card that does four damage as a plant which is just an unseen, it's ungodly amount of damage. Just compare this, let's say, to Split P, which is like a, amazing, really, really high amount of damage. Plus, it has this idea where it's attacking not in its lane, but only in the other two lanes. So it's very good at controlling, like if they put a zombie on the field, you want to put this next to it, 
in the lane before, so the zombie can't even hit face. Good answer to Swashbuckler. Uh, you know, Toxic Waste Imp. A lot of really two, good two-cost cards will die to Roto Vega. Plus, it stays on the field and will end up doing more damage that turn. Plus, it's doing two damage here on its face that turn, which is fine. The, the downside of this, first of all, it does not protect itself in its lane. It's basically the only card. Uh, that does not protect itself in its lane, except for, like, you know, uh, Ragnaros Berry or whatever. So, um... I should recycle my fifth lightning and shut up. All right, Roto Vega. <laughs> now, this is a very good card to buff. I mean, if you are going to combine this, let's say this was, like, the first OP deck we did in, in the tri when Triassic came out. It's from a long time ago on the Frame Up channel that you can actually combine. If you buff this card at all, it becomes ridiculous because even with P-Patch, this is a four cost card that is now going to have four, three worth of stats and it's going to do eight damage. You, If you combine this, let's say with um, uh, any card that buffs that buffs up your guys, even Onion Rings, let's say, it just makes this into like a really, really big beast. Uh, obviously, with the Bog, is probably one of the best combos with Roto Big. Because, again, now this does eight damage. It's circumstantial. It doesn't protect itself. The other downside, of course, of Roto Big is the one health. The one health is a killer because you really don't want to be playing this in lane one or lane five because then it really cuts its potential map. It's only doing half the damage. You can sometimes get a good play in, one, in, in the Heights lane or Amphibious lane, but... That's not very good. The Amphibious doesn't add that much to Rotobega except for its combination with Bog. So you're always going to be wanting to play this on a ground lane. And on the ground lane, this thing is just fair game. We're talking about uh, Total Eclipse, Trapper Territory. Again, all the Nibbles, Bungie Plumbers, Beam Me Up. There's just so many cards that sort of trade with this for free or able to control this. So it's it's so good in some situations when your opponent applies a Dry Zombie and then just so bad in others. Hard to write Roto Vega. I, I don't know if I'm going to put this in A because I actually don't think it's an A tier card. I know Reddit would probably put it in S. Um, huh. I mean, it's not bad. You're really, it is a very cheap card. So cheap cards being very situational are, are better because, you know, you can really just choose not to play them and you don't lose that much from not playing. Even skipping turn two is not the end of the world, even though it can be harsh. Especially if you're if the zombie skipped, you skip. They're fine. If the zombie didn't skip, you have a Rotobega play. I think I'll put it in low eight tier because I do think that this is um, it is a, a very viable in a lot of decks. It can be used as an aggro card. Can be used as a control card. It really has a lot of applications, uh, and it can be used as sort of like a combo card. Let's say with cards that buff it up. Uh, and amphibious decks. There's really a lot of applications for Rotobega. It's not the great. It's again very very risky, but. It's not that hard to really pull off. All right. I'll stick it in A. Next. Next, next, next. Where are we? We're up to Snow P. This is a horrible, horrible card. And this is yet another example. It almost seems like all of the prototypical cards from PVZ1, the real representative of the, of the franchise. Snow P was such a staple in terms of slowing down those zombies on PVZ1. And they made this into trash. This is not a good, <laughs> not a good card. Guy. Two cost two two stats is just not enough. This needs to be a three two or a two three or something. Um, really, really, this Ice Age baby two point oh exactly. Even in freeze decks, which seems to be the best synergy, even for budget players, I urge you do not run Snow P in your deck. It's not a reliable source of freeze. What are you trying to combo this with? If you're, what are the two freeze synergy cards? If you're trying to stick a snowdrop on the field, and put your uh, your your, your snowpy like to the left of it, so this your 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 snowdrop is still going to be a one two. It can still just die to anything to Rolling Stone to Bungie Plumber. The way to activate snowdrop, you got to activate it immediately, and then make it have those big you know one cost three four stats. Thank you so much, Jalisterian. Really appreciate. It. Welcome to the family. Got to make this thing have the big stats before the zombies are able to react to it. Because once it's a 3-4, there's actually very few things in the game that answer. They can still fruitcake it, but that's usually a pretty good deal. You cannot rely on Snow P in order to buff your Snow Drops. And the other card that this will combine with, again, is Winter Squash. Which, if you're playing Winter Squash for 4, uh, on turn to rely that this is going to actually, a 2-2 two -two on turn 5, is going to remove a zombie... Is going to attack a zombie and that they're not going to have an answer, not going to be able to do two damage to this thing. It's just so 
ridiculously unreliable. This is a horrible, horrible card, even in the deck where it really synergizes. It's not worth wor with P synergy. There's just, there's really just nothing here. If you combine this with another freeze card, it will freeze it indefinitely. So let's say if you use um, Iceberg Lettuce or a team up together with this, this will freeze it and then they won't attack and they'll freeze it again, freeze it again. So it, it's a cool card like that. But again, that's a really, really unreliable strat on the highest level of the game. Who is not going to have two damage to answer this card? And unfortunately, just like basically all of the typical PVZ1 cards, this is just going right in F tier. There's really no... It's so sad. This just needs to have better stats. I think as a 3-2 or a 2-3, or a this 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 would be viable. I think even as a 2-3 would be best because it freezes. But anyway. But anyway. Next. All right, guys. I changed my mind. Electric Reed is not... <laughs> Lightning Reed. Electric Reed. Lightning Reed. Is not the worst card in the game. So magic beats. <laughs> This is the worst card in the game. Okay, we're getting there, guys. This is the one. This is the this is the worst. This is so bad. Thank you so much, the fat cat. Let me tell you, this card is especially painful because of its history. This was enacted into the game. I believe it was like it wasn't even a rare. I think it was like an uncommon back in set one. And it had exactly this ability, so Magic Beans, shuffle four Magic Beans dogs in your deck. It seems like a good strategy, and it's not. The game is just too fast for this to be reliable. Plus, now you you spend two whole sun on it. It spends a whole card, so you get card disadvantage. You get tempo disadvantage on turn two, and it has such an unreliable condition. Most times you play so Magic Bean, you're not ever going to see one of those four Magic Bean stocks. Now, it's only four cards and a 40 card, whatever, 35 card deck by that time. So that's the problem. Now, it, it, there came a point, I don't know when it was, in 2017, that they buffed so Magic Beans. And they made this draw a card. And that made it so good. Because so Magic Beans, first of all, it doesn't give you that card disadvantage when you play it. Uh, it also has some uh, like abilities of just like activating your Dino Roars on the field. It will also, if you're playing this together in a bean deck, which again, it has that bean synergy, it'll draw you that extra card. It'll draw you that next bean for the next turn. So it's sort of a way which cycles through your deck. It also is sort of self-synergetic when this draws a card because it will, that, that, so those magic bean stocks, those precious one cost four fours draw a card are just one step closer to your hand if you draw a card. Every once in a while you get lucky to play this and you just shuffle it in and draw it right off the top of your deck. Very unlikely, but it at least is giving you something. This, I was saying for so long, so Magic Beans needs to draw a card and eventually they did it. They literally added the card draw to this and then Cycle Cap came along, and which would run four copies of So Magic Beans. It was a really cool way of activating your Admiral Navy Beans, and it was a way of cycling through your deck to draw extra cards to get that next Planet of the Grapes, get the next Astro Shroom. And instead of just nerfing, the first step of nerfing Cycle Cap was not to nerf Planet of the Grapes, which used to cost two. Instead, they went after this card, and they're like, nope, actually, actually, we're taking So Magic Beans, and we're going to remove the card draw, just rendering this back to its completely horrible, useless state. It's like, it, there's some cards in this game that really need a, a fix, and they have it. They, they literally made exactly the right fix. This is exactly what this card should have said. And then they, they actually unfix the card. I don't think that's precedented in anything in this game, where they literally made the card perfect, and then they <laughs> they screwed it up. Pardon my French. This is so, this this card sucks. And you know what's even worse now? They turn this into a super rare. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember if that happened before the, 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 the nerf or after the nerf. But this, <laughs> they actually made this like, oh, it's so, I feel like this actually happened after the nerf. If my memory serves me correctly, correct me in the, in the chat or in the comment section below. If I, I think they actually got rid of the card draw and then they turned it into super rare. <laughs> Which anyway, changing the rarity of the cards was the most noob, stupid marketing. Whoever at PopCap was in charge of the rarity changes, you suck at your job. I'm sorry. There, I freaking said it. It was the worst move you could possibly do to a game. Just try to make it more pay to win. That's how you're going to revive your game instead of good, solid marketing. <sighs> more like tragic beanstalks. This is going into communist Russia. Nothing more to be said. I had enough. I'm just going to end the tier list right there. No, I'm joking. Cattail. Ugh. Here's another example. This was 
arguably the most fun plant in the original Plants vs. Zombies. It, it, this was so cool. I used to put this in the amphibious lane. You had to, you know, put it only on top. It was only amphibious. So you had to put it on top of a lily pad. So that was cool. And then this thing would start shooting these little cattails, the little pricks. It would, it would be shooting them all around the field. It would actually, like, home in on zombies in all the lanes. And you could just, like, fill up the whole amphibious lane with a bunch of cattails and just win levels that way. This was so much fun. And this is the most stupid meh. Three cost, three, two, amphibious. Like, a two cost, three, two is not even that good in this game. It's okay. That's, like, okay stat. Amphibious is not worth one sun. This still dies to all the same things that a three cost three two would die, which is bungee plum, all this stuff. They're not gonna be, you don't control plants by putting a two attack guy in the water. It's just not how this game works. Great, it has animal synergy. It's so sad how they just took every, every good card from the original plan for zombies and they screwed it up. Horrible, horrible. I think even like pea shooter, the typical pea shooter should be like a zero cost two two, no team ups, no nothing. Like just make make all the cards great, make the originals anyway. End of rant. Next, Chili Pepper. Chili Pepper's okay. Um, I, I'm actually not even gonna get, gonna give this the same tier as some of the other freeze cards. So I'm gonna be putting this in C tier because. This is a very, very expensive freeze. I mean, it's not as good of a freeze as Iceberg Lettuce. So you're really only going to be using this again in freeze decks. Trying to use this as control is just not worth it. I know this, if they play as zombies, then this eventually will do four damage. But this can be answered because it only has one health. Like, if this was the three cost, two, three. So it's a, a hard card to answer. And it also freezes. So then it's basically sort of controlling something for four damage on turn three because it freezes it and then it'll hit it again if you front it with it. I feel like that could have been good, but there, it's so easy to just do one damage on turn four to this and just kind of ruin that part of it. So uh, it's really only gonna be good in freeze decks. And again, even in a lot of freeze decks, I don't even run that many chili peppers. Maybe you'll run like two or three, just because it's again, you can't really count. What are you comboing this with? Like on turn four, you can combo this with Snowdrop. Before that, it's kind of useless. You need there to be Snowdrop and exactly Iceberg Lettuce on two in order for this to even be a thing on three or else it's unplayable. It's also almost unplayable, again, with the uh, Winter Squash. It's nice with Winter Squash because it'll hit, like, untrickable minions. It'll freeze them as opposed to the other freezes really don't. But really, Jolly Holly, anyway, is better at that with Winter Squash than uh, than Ice than, than ch Chili Pepper. Again, it's viable. It's viable in one deck, but it's not very good. Oh, baby, here's Cool Bean. This is actually a very good card. Uh, three cost three three is, is fine stats. It's not a difficult card. It's, it is a difficult card to remove. Doesn't die to any small removal cards. Bungie Plumber, Rolling Stone, Weed Spray. None of those uh, remove Cool Bean off the field. So besides for its stats being good, it also freezes Gravestone. So it's a answer to tempo. It like gives you a lot of tempo against Gravestone decks. And again, this is sort of like the safest card to run anti-Gravestone because you... It, it, answered, but it answers Gravestones is not a liability. Like I explained before by Grave Flick and Grave Buster, it's a huge liability to have those against non-Gravestone decks. This is not a liability really at all against non-Gravestone decks because it still actually has really, really decent stats. I'm actually putting this in A tier because uh, really, if you ran a few Cool Beans in basically any Smarty deck, I have no problem with that because you're, you're putting in a reliable answer. Again, this doesn't answer Pogo, which is the most problematic gravestone even though it's it's not bad against pogo the pogo typically doesn't want to bounce this because then it'll this will freeze the mix of grave digger this will slow down pogo mug a lot it doesn't really outright answer it so this is um again it's not it doesn't answer the most problematic combo but again it will answer pirates there's a lot of things line dancing zombie this is a really good anti anti tempo for the for the for zombie gravestone decks uh, and it's not a liability. It also is a bean added bonus just in bean decks. It does a little bit extra. Again, it's not the best. That's not the main use of this card to be a bean, but it does have that value. I'll put this in A tier because it really is a solid inclusion in, in really any deck. Um, here's Go Nuts. Go Nuts, it, it seems like a very high potential card. I've never really gotten Go Nuts to work. I know I did like a cycle cap deck where I also ran Go Nuts because that, that deck has a lot of team ups already, but... The Gonus really, it's so out, was outclassed in that deck by Pine Clone, for example. Um, this is circumstantial. It limits, here's the problems with Gonuts. This is what I, I think is really the problem. Let's go in order. The main problem is it's a three cost 2-2. Two, two. 
Uh, so the tur if you play this on turn three, it just gets removed before it's going to do anything. Even if you play this on turn four and you play one or two team up cards, which is the max you're going to get on turn four, it's still, again, it's not a lot of value and this still gets removed by Bungie Plumber. If you play it like on turn five and later, it's usually just going to be too slow because the type of deck, which really gets into problem number two with this, you have, this is limited to a deck type that has, it has to have a lot of team ups in it, a lot, a lot. And decks with a ton of team ups in it, like how are you going to survive until turn five? Team up cards typically have Weaker stats, I know you have Shellery, it does decent damage, but you're going to end up having like a lot of Shroom for Twos, Puff Shrooms, I don't know, what other team-ups are there, like Cattail, <laughs> like, there's not, you know, you have like Beans, the, 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 you're not going to be able to control your opponent to stall until the late game, until turn 5 and 6 to be able to get a decent uh, combo with Go Nuts, and even once you do that on turns 5 and 6, Field Clear still answers this, I know Weed Spray won't. Chickening, again, not the greatest card, so you don't, I, I don't know if Chickening is really the great example, but uh, just some kind of thing with Bungie Plumbers and Beam Me Ups, you can really, um, you can really, if you even have that one Bungie Plumber, or that one Fruitcake, or whatever it is to remove uh, the three cost Go Nuts, the other minions on the field are going to be pretty answerable. If you have, again, Black Holes, Trapper Territories, so a lot of things that do a little bit of damage that will deal with your very low health team ups I, I would much rather run pine clone for example on turn five than some go nuts combo because you can be running all those same puff shrooms all those same um if you're comboing this with little buddy or any of the other little little cards and now those cards have three health with pine clone um so <laughs> if you're trying to make a swarm deck uh it, that will at least play around field clear and they won't be answerable by bungee plumbers and trapper territories etc so, you know, I haven't found the good Go Nuts deck. Every once in a while, this take, takes over games, especially against Huge Giganticus and Super Brains. This can take over games because they have no way of dealing to damage. Uh, most of the other most of the other heroes are going to have answers to this. Uh, not even, you know, even with their three-cost card. Even Alien Ooze answers this card really, really well. So if you're building a your whole deck around it and then you lose your engine the turn you play it, your deck's trash. Uh, that's really that's really why I I don't think Go Nuts is a very good card and I'm gonna put it in D tier because again every you'll say Fry remember that one time that you played against the guy with two Go Nuts and you were playing I don't even know why you're playing Huge Giganticus and the guy took over yeah it's fine but the actual win rate of that deck against a lot of the good zombie decks is just gonna be extremely low. Next here's um uh, Mayflower. Not a very good card. Right when this came out, I thought it was amazing. I thought it was like a really reliable source of card draw. Uh, it's not really a reliable source of card draw because some people, they'll start running this in like bean decks and it's like, great, it'll be a great way of getting beans. It's not a great way of getting beans. Just run beans. Just run cosmic beans. It's a much better way of, of being a bean and getting a bean. Uh, three cost two, three, very weak stats. You know, I mean, for the amphibious, I guess it's okay. It, it's not the easiest card to answer. I mean, you need a Rolling Stone or a Fruitcake or a Wrath or or a weed spray or something to remove this. But even, here's the problem. The cards it actually conjures are not necessarily going to work with your deck. Like, you don't want to be running, if you're getting beans, which half the cards I think are beans, basically. There's a lot more beans than squash and corn, obviously. So half the cards are going to be beans, which running this in a bean deck is not a good idea. Just run a bean. If you're going to, like, what do you want? You want a squash? Like, who said the squash? <laughs> I mean, do you want corn? Like, if you get kernel corn, I guess that's fine. But again, that's not playable for another four turns. Colonel Corn's going to be a cost. Cobb Cannon is a good card. Just run Cobb Cannon in your deck. Like, why are you running Mayflower? Like, do something that actually reliably helps your deck win. This does not rely... The car, kind of card draw this creates does not reliably help your deck win. I think if this said Mayflower was 3 cost, 2, 3 Amphibious, when this hurts the Zombie Hero draw a card, I think this would actually be really, really decent. And I wish... I've ranted about this in the Mega Hero class. I really, really wish there was decent card draw on the plant side for, to make combo decks. Combo decks are so weak because there's just, what do you, how do you draw cards? Party time, like flourish, like there's not, there are not very good cards for, for card draw on the plant side in, in general. Uh, so that would have made Mayflower good. I, I really don't think this is a very good card. It's kind of just meh. I'm putting it in D tier just because again, it, it, in terms of, it's actual stats and how good it is. Maybe like in arena mode, I would have put this in C, but because it doesn't actually make its way into a lot of decks, it's not worth sacrificing your your other, your better three drops that you could be running instead and put Mayflower. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to put that in D tier. It, it makes your Dino Roars. It doesn't even rely if you do your Dino Roars. This is in the last lane. This is very often going to get blocked. 
uh, you know, it doesn't activate its ability. It doesn't activate its ability if it's fronted too. It's not like when, like Captain Cucumber that draws cards, conjures cards whenever you're, it even attacks a plant, it attacks a zombie. This is going to only if it hits face, which again, just makes it a little bit less good. All right. Here is Planet of the Grapes. Planet of the Grapes. Um, this is really good in one deck and <laughs> it's Cycle Cap. And in that deck, it's amazing. This is, Cycle Cap is still a very, very good deck. I used to say it was the best deck in the game. I probably have changed my mind about that. I think people who know how to play around Planet of the Grapes know what, how Cycle Cap works and how to play around it. Uh, it becomes a lot less good, but um, against your average player, I think Cycle Cap is still very good. It's still very viable in ranked mode because, you know, ranked mode is ranked mode in this game. Um, let's get rid of the sweater. I'm kind of sweating. So I really haven't found a great use for Planet of the Grapes in anything except for Cycle Cap. This used to cost two, they made it three. I think that was fair, just to slow Cycle Cap down one more turn. Cycle Cap, of course, when you put your Admiral Navy Bean and Astro Shrooms into this, which do damage as you play every little minion on the field, which will hit face and then draw you a card and you can play more little minions. You can do this with just Admiral Navy Bean and non-Cycle Cap, like in any Smarty deck, but again, you don't, it usually, you have having four admiral navy beans typically does not justify planet of the grapes uh the, some people like running this together with sporticus which again you're playing sporticus on three it survives turn three then you play planet of the grapes on turn four and then both the planet of the grapes and the sporticus are surviving turn four and they're playing a trick and that trick is not removing sporticus in which case sporticus does not activate so that's the reason why that combo is not a good combo uh, even though Spartacus is a decent card. Uh, I'm just going to put this in... Meh. It's kind of weird because it's part of one of the better decks in the game, but it otherwise it's completely useless. I'm actually going to put this in B. <laughs> Am I going to put this in the same as Bog? See, Bog is more useful in more decks. This is part of one of the best decks in the game, but it's not even just Nightcap. It's just one deck of one hero that this is really useful and otherwise... Is basically is completely unplayable in any other deck in the game. Uh, I'll put it in B. Next. Next. I wonder if it deserves to be an A just because it's part of one of the one of the great decks in the game. Hmm. Let's just put it in B. Alright. Could have been an A though. Here's Rescue Radish. This is a lot better than Firefighter. People, if, if you don't understand what the difference is between Rescue Radish and Firefighter, I, Nothing personal, you just should play the game a lot more and gain some more experience and you'll understand. But I'll explain it to you if you uh, if you don't get it. This is a plant, non-gravestone obviously, which activates its ability immediately. Uh, Firefighter is a zombie, which is a gravestone, which activates its ability in a, in, a, in a phase, in the trick phase, where it's impossible to replay uh, that plant. The fact that you can, with Rescue Radish, replay the plant that it bounces makes us a lot better. So notable combos with uh, Roto with uh, it, it combos with Rotobega. Like if your Rotobega gets some value, uh, you, this is actually that Reddit deck, the Reddit Rose deck, really taught me this concept, which I, I feel like was a really good sort of great idea. Uh, you can bounce the Rotobega once it gets fronted off the field on turn three, which again gives you very very strong stats for a three cost cards. That's one of the best stats for a three cost card in the game. Uh, three cost three four. This will trade with with like most three cost zombies and 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 survive on the field as a three one at least, uh, which is really really good. So you can combo with that. You can combo it with uh, really a lot of free cards. Notably also uh, with uh, Nightcap, you're able to put a Puffshroom on the field, bounce that Puffshroom back. You get a three four and then replay Puffshroom. This is a zero cost card, so it combos really well. Uh, even better is with Little Buddy because Little Buddy will actually heal you, and then you can pop this back into your hands, get a 3-4 that turn, and still have the little buddy to play later, uh, and heal you again, which is super, super nice with a card like an active ability. Now, Rescue Ash also has really cool combos with like Brainana. If you have Brainana on the field, you can, on turn nine, which if you're stalling that late in the game, you can sort of bounce this back onto the, on, into your hand and then replay the Brainana, which seems like a really expensive combo, and it is, but it actually is worth it because I've won a lot of games on turn nine with Rescue Radish Brainana, like having extra access to the extra banana we'll get into banana why it's such a great card in the in it later also this is a plant it's not a zombie like as a zombie even like three cost three four dries dry zombies are not as good as dry plants because dry zombies you play and then it allows the plants to react to it you're playing rescue in reaction 
to what the zombies play. So if they play really anything on the field, you can stick this in front of it to control it. And a 3-4 controlling a 3-drop is a really, really good idea. As opposed to a zombie, you're just playing this on the field. You're not you're at most controlling their 2-drop, and it lets the plants respond to it by playing whatever they want. Uh, you can really, even if you've passed the first two turns, just as a tempo play, play Rescue Radish, just as a 3-4 in the field, and it's great. Uh, so obviously there's a lot of creative little combos you can do with this. Uh, it also heals the guy when you put it back into your into your hand. Usually not a great consideration because cheap cards typically don't need to get healed. Um, I think this is has root synergy. Oh my gosh! You know what? Just because of its root synergy, I think we're putting it in. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna put this in B tier. I think it's a solid card. It's not viable in that many decks. It's really really cool combo with a couple cards again like Little Buddy and and Brainana and. Uh, it is, it is again, limited, though, in terms of its deck use, because you cannot run this in aggro, or else it's going to be such a, a, a liability. You really can't even run this in most tempo decks, because the when played ability bouncing at our plant is going to end up taking tempo off the field. And what you're trying to do, do is maintain more tempo. It's not necessarily a prototypical control card either, so it doesn't actually fit <laughs> into most decks of any particular archetype but it does have a few uses and i'll put it in b tier very very high stat card which is uh you know as a three three this would be obviously a lot worse all right next here is sporticos it's a decent card it's anti-trick it's probably not as good anti-trick as black ip like if you're gonna punish your opponent for playing tricks doing damage to their face is not necessarily the best way I'd rather something growing in terms of stats. That's why I prefer Black IP to Sporticus if in just the mindset of denying tricks. I also um, definitely prefer Forget-Me-Nuts, which prevents them from playing tricks in the first place. Instead of two damage is not a great answer to a trick. You know what I mean? It's not such a huge anti-motivation, especially for a three drop. Uh, if I really want to answer tricks, I'm going to play Brain Anna. So in terms of like its function and, and its ability... Not great. It has Mushroom Synergy. I've tried playing this on three and buffed Shroom on turn four. Very unreliable. It has Nut Synergy. Like, what, what has Nut Synergy in this game? Mirror Nut's not even a good card, and this doesn't even have a lot of health. It doesn't synergize that well uh, with Nut Synergy. I guess the other card is freaking Smackadamia. Also, not a very good card. So, three costs three three is good stats, though. It's actually main redeeming quality is good stats, plus it's a little bit of, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Again, its ability is not really... The reason to run it, the, the, the damage to face doesn't combo very well with Planet of the Grapes. It's really not a good idea. This card's just okay. It, it actually is a decent card, though. I mean, it, it does punish tricks to, to some extent. If it's removed, you know, this used to actually do, at least do the two damage. If you would, like, fruitcake this card, it would have done the two damage and then died. They actually nerfed a lot of game mechanics like that. Um, that now when this dies from the actual trick, uh, this will typically not do the two damage unless it's extremely indirect. Um, anyway, it's, it's just okay. Don't mind seeing this index as long as you have, you know, something you need to fill your three slot with. Jeez. Next. Next. Spring Bean. Very underrated card. It's actually a very reliable removal card. Again, bouncing something off the field really reliably. This answers a lot of very expensive minions, but even on turn three, if you are running a deck that is mid-range. So you're going to be coming in really strong on turn four, on turn five with that onion ring combo or with, um, I don't know, your banana source wreck, some galling piece, something. You just need to stall for turns. This does just remove everything unless it's untrickable uh, off the field on turn three. It also is a bean, so it's a very uh, good activ activator for Admiral Navy Bean. I love running a couple of these uh, in cycle cap. Uh, just because, again, it's a removal. You need to make your Planet of the Grapes combo happen afterwards, and you want to just be able, in case they put something like a raiding, like a raiding raptor, or something super problematic in the field, you just want to have that automatic answer to it. Uh, actually, extremely underrated card. We'll kind of compare this maybe to Jumping Bean uh, a little bit later, but it's sort of a comparable. Probably overall is better than Jumping Bean. Um, you really, like, it, it, just having as a... There are better removal cards, obviously, in the game, like Shamrocket, but... <laughs> <laughs> Shamrock, stupid card anyway. Um, I I think this is actually a really good card. I'll put it in B tier. It's just nice and solid. All right, here's Vanilla. Back in set one, I really... Three cost three, three is good stats. Uh, I don't think it was a bean back then. I think they even added this little bean thing on the back of it just to make it into a bean. 
Uh, it was a three cost three three flower. Flowers didn't have that much synergy back then either. It was just power flower and briar rose with cost six, so it wasn't very good. I used to say this is actually a really good card, and it was like a three cost three three is decent stats, and uh, this will answer. This will make a, at least a good trade with most three drops. It'll out trade two drops, which I know is not a very good strategy, but you end up with a lot of tempo on the field that way. Now vanilla is unfortunately there's been so many three cost three threes added to the game that vanilla is just unplayable. Um, it's in the same class, for example, as Sporticus, which is always better, and especially Cool Bean, which is always better. So, uh, there's really just no time to play Vanilla, and unfortunately, sad Vanilla, because I love, I love Vanilla. It's like the only, it's, it's basically the only card, besides for the basic cards, that has no ability, and that's sort of what they were going with for Vanilla, it's just stats. Like, I feel like we could have just put, like, made this a 3 cost 3, 4, and then it would actually be, like, viable. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think this, correct me if I'm wrong, I think besides for the basic cards, this is the only, that's what vanilla means. Vanilla has a second meaning of being just, it's just nothing interesting. You know, just plain, unkinky, whatever you want to call it. It's going in F tier. Really no reason to ever run that in any deck ever. Sad. Bean counter. This doesn't make it into a lot of decks. It's, it's so cool. I don't think this has enough health. Like, I feel like as a four cost two, three, like being a two, two on turn four is just crap. This is gonna be removed before you're able to build this. Now, on turn five, you're able to play together with one B, now it's a three, three, it just doesn't do enough. On turn six, like you've spent six on developing a four, four and two, one, ones. It's just not worth it. So it's very, very hard to find a, a deck for bean counter. Even in most Admiral Navy bean decks, certainly in decks like Cycle Cap, you usually do not run bean counter. I used to really like this back in the day, um, but it, it's really not worth it. Sometimes the, those little winnie beanies will be useful. Like I used to run like Pine Clone decks with bean counter, which, you know, you're going to play this on turn four. You have all these little weenie beanies, so you can turn those into Pine Clones, which again, it, it's way too slow. It's just better to run you know, Puff Shroom and Shroom for two, just way better options. Uh, the only deck I can really think of that Bean Counter is actually a good idea uh, is an Onion Rings deck. We used to run this, like on turn four, you can sort of stall for time with this on turn four, just block something. It's not gonna remove their four drop, but you play this on the field, maybe make them remove this, and then you are going to have two Weenie Beanies in your hand, which then you can play Onion Rings on turn five, and that will give you two more one cost four fours, which is amazing. So that's kind of the only use of this. And even in onion rings decks, you don't have to run bean counter. It's probably overall better to run just one drops because the this is circumstantial to be able to get away with playing this on turn four. Typically even just like bouncing something off the field like with a bounce minion would be better than running than, you know, on turn four than playing bean counter from that situation. Uh, it's very, very sad. I'm putting this in D tier. I, I don't think it's useless, but it, it really, I, I can't even really think of the deck that this is just like really important in, you know? Next. Cartillery. So this is a, another one of these really high risk, high reward cards. It does a lot of damage. And again, it's team up. So it's essentially bullseye damage. You can pull that off. Problem is, if you're playing aggro, this is a very similar problem to Red Stinger, which is really a four cost seven two. is that the reason this is not that very good in aggro is if you're playing aggro, they're going to be sticking minions in front of your problematic minions, like your, I don't know, like any of your strong cards, like your Haunted Pumpkins or whatever is going aggro. Um, the, the Smarty class isn't necessarily the best aggro class in general, like you have Shallery and Rotobega, and that's kind of it. So it's really sort of in the wrong class as being this aggro card. You can put this in its own lane. It still does five damage, which is a lot. I think for like maybe very budget players, this could work as an aggro card. On the highest level of the game, you never see it. Um, and again, it also just does die to two damage. So a bungee plumber, a one cost card, like obliterates this. Even there's a lot of two or three cost cards, which really completely remove this and you know benefit the zombie hero when you play a card like this uh i don't think it's completely useless i'm basically going to put it in the same category as bean counter because it's just it's just not a very good card all right here's jelly bean uh this is a really good card it'll suck the second bean synergy card i guess if you don't count freaking bean counter uh this puts if you can activate this ability i mean this puts a five four on the field very often this is going to be amphibious since there's a lot of like good one cost amphibious beans like admiral and lima 
uh and you know this will be in the water this bounces a whole guy off the field i mean this gives you so much stats plus this grows every single time you bounce which is not a very great ability but it's still an added bonus you know i guess the uh, that initial one one of stats is typically all the jelly bean gets um it also only costs four i mean this is very cheap for what it does just comparing it let's say to jumping bean which doesn't need the spring but it does cost one one less and also has much better stats than, you know than than jumping bean on the field jumping bean's not a bad card at all by the way um jelly bean again it, you need the the problem with including this in a lot of decks obviously is you need to have at least like 12 cheap beans in order for this to be good because you don't want to be covering a, a strong beam with this or else it's not worth it so you gotta basically have four admirals four alignment pluridons and four cosmic cosmic beans basically for this to be good so very very limited uh in those decks it's very very good in bean decks extremely good we've even had just all out bean bounce decks they haven't really had a lot of success with this uh so because it's not very good in a lot of decks but very good in some decks uh i'm just going to be putting this in b again it's not as good as admiral even though in the bean bounce deck it's just as important as admiral but you can play admiral navy bean bean swarm a lot more decks you don't need there to be an all-out bounce you don't need the jelly beans in the admiral decks you do need the admirals in the jelly bean decks and that's why admiral is the better card next it looks like communist russia got oh no it's still on the field okay that's fine keep it going until we uh, rank out one more of these classes all right it's going in b ah Leaf Blower is not a good card. It's a four cost three four. So again, kind of similar, similar to to Jelly Bean. Its actual condition though of needing to land in an environment uh, is way too circumstantial. This is really, really not a good card. Because first of all, environments need to have been played, which not every game by turn four has an environment been played. It's really unre very unreliable in that sense. Plus, even if an environment has been played. You can't have a guy in that environment. Like if they played an environment against one of your guys, like a like black hole or totally eclipse or really anything, uh, if your lane is clogged, this doesn't do anything. I feel like if this would activate on heights as well, this would actually become a viable card because then it would still be limited to lanes. But at least you'll always have like a opportunity to activate its ability. As a four cost three four, it's just not worth it. The amphibious, it just doesn't. It's just so meh. It's such a really this card doesn't. It's, it's so flawed. It needs more stats if it's going to be that circumstantial. Like, at least be a 4 cost 4-4. Four, four. I feel like maybe then it would at least be able to control 4 drops. I don't know. Not a very good card. And I'm going to put Leaf Blower in F because, in all honesty, even in bounce decks where this really should belong, it's actually not a viable inclusion at all. It's kind of sad. I should read his description. What does his description say? You want to keep your lawn tidy? Tired of looking at those unsightly zombies? Then I'm your guy. Exactly. Very mad all around. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Navy Bean. Navy Bean is sort of like the typical amphibious synergy card. I used to like running Citron amphibious decks. I don't find that they're very good nowadays. So the one kind of cool deck you do is you run snake grass which we'll get to in a little bit you play this on turn five with one of citron's protect powers either his root wall or a superpower makes two snake grasses on the field and then on turn six uh you can come with navy bean to sort of buff all the, those two snake grasses out plus whatever amphibious cards you have on the field i'll tell you the problem with navy bean here's the real problem is that it itself is a four cost three three so it has very poor stats so you're only going to be able to justify this if you have at least two other amphibious minions on the field making this circumstantial plus th this is sort of a tempo card the point of this is that you're gaining tempo you're putting more stats on the field than your opponent so amphibious cards have very poor stats to begin with so it's such a flawed <laughs> it's such a flawed strategy to begin with like look at amphibious cards like okay i guess uh, rotobig is not a great example but if you're running enough amphibious cards like cattail like laser cattail like i guess lima plurodon has okay stats but most amphibious car you're gonna have to run a, an almost completely amphibious deck uh, even a card like snake grass is not good because of its stats it's good because of its ability it, it's not like you're not if you it, it, it's a combo card it's not a tempo card per se i guess that makes sense so the the, the way this synergizes with amphibious is so the rest of the cards in your deck are going to be anti that synergy uh and that's why navy bean's not a good card again it's okay in amphibious citron decks you can see some of those old ones we ran 
Um, I think I'm going to put this in C because, again, it, it is viable. It, 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 it's just not great and certainly not at the top of the uh, top tier of this game. All right, here's Shrinking Violet. So Shrinking Violet is going to be a hard card to rate. I, I, I think this is a really, really powerful anti-swarm card. So it's very good. Let's just think about matchups right now. If the opponent is playing like aggro swarm, on the zombie side, so it depends. If they're going with low attack bullseye minions, or like a lot of minions, like a flag swarm deck, then Shrinking Violet is very good against that. But if they're playing an aggro deck that relies on having high attack, let's say, you know, decks a lot of line dancing zombies and, uh, you know, teleporting in cuckoo zombies and, and, and stuff like that. So Shrinking Violet's gonna be useless. It really does not do enough against that. Against tempo decks, Shrinking Violet is also typically not very good because the cards up there playing on turn three and particularly on turn four, typically do not die to Shrinking Violet. There's gonna be a couple exceptions, of course. I mean, it's Stompadon, I guess, dies very badly to Shrinking Violet. So if they're not, it's not gonna be good against, it's gonna be good against some aggro decks, not all of them. It's not good against tempo. And it's also not good against control because control decks are not going to be putting little a bunch of little cheap minions on the field. They're going to be controlling you and playing a lot of late game minions, which again, against cards, a few cards in the field that don't die to Shrinking Violet, this is really not worth it. It's very, very circumstantial and it has flower synergy. That's great. So again, every once in a while, Shrinking Violet is great. I don't have a problem even running a couple of Shrinking Violets because... It, it's never like horrible. I mean, sometimes it's horrible. It's rarely going to be just horrible. Very often, again, it, it does answer a couple like really, really problematic cards in this game. Like, you know, like, uh, like, like Stompadon and I don't know, Raiding Raptor on, on four. Not very common. Dr. Spacetime dies to it. Flag Swarm dies to this very often. But again, if they Flag Swarm and they have genetic experiments, which really get to three attack their first turn, this is not going to be good. So it's it's just one of these cards that it's like it's not great it's not bad it's going in b what can i say uh for i change the lowest line name it's not funny why should i change it though if there's anyone here who sympathizes with communist russia i don't know i don't know if i have to uh <laughs> i don't know if i need to change my change my stream because of that anyway next Snake Grass. Snake Grass, again, uh, not a very good card. You can run this in the Amphibious Citron deck. It's very, very circumstantial. Again, the 4 cost 4 2. It will usually die uh, when you play it on turn 4. It dies to Beam Me Up, Bungie Plumber, Fruitcake. Just, there's so many cheaper cards uh, that answer this. Very, very hard to pull off in any deck. Again, with Citron, you can play it on turn 5 and protect it. You can maybe play this also with like a card like um like photosynthesizer which will give a little extra health it won't even necessarily survive this used to actually be a three two which kind of almost made it easier to protect because now it also dies to rocket science it's just another there's more rocket sciences in the meta than there are hand of devastation i know it does more attack but it's snake grass is really just not a very good card it's just meh i'm gonna put it in the same as like you know chili pepper and i'll put it in c tier because again every once in a while this could be okay it probably should be in d yeah, I'll put it in D. I think actually this is a. Uh, these cards are actually better than than Snake Grass. It's so sad. Anyway, here's Snapdragon, another very very difficult card um, to to rate. So against aggro decks, this is actually very good. Both this is actually good against both kinds of zombie aggro decks. If they're running low attack bullseye, the cards are going to get field cleared by Snapdragon. If they're running high attack low health guys. It's also going to get uh, against Snapdragon. So this is a good control card. Uh, it's a decent tempo card because like, if this even, you know, stays on the field as a 3-3 and removes one other zombie to the right of it, you've really gotten a lot of value for 4-drop. So it can be used. It can't really, not really great aggro unless you're kind of like protecting your other aggro cards with Snapdragon. Maybe that could be a viable strategy. Hmm. You're on like Haunted Pumpkin and Snapdragon. I wonder if that would work. Uh, plus it has dragon synergy and flower synergy, which are useless. So I, you know, you know, another really, really hard card to rate. It's not going in A tier. I know some people swear by Snapdragon, but again, it actually is a very bad matchup with Pogo, a very bad matchup with um, Fruitcake, with a lot of the other 
it's not reliable. You're not always going to have, it's not good against tricks. You know what I mean? Any deck that's, that's just past turn four is going to play a trick. Snapdragon is not enough stats to justify a four drop. So it's, it's tough. I'm just going to put it in B. It's not an A tier card. Uh, it's really hard to put it lower than B though. It's just okay. This actually card was buffed a lot. It used to be a 3-1. Then it turned into a 3-2 and now it's a 3-3. On the highest level of the game, it's it's a B. It's okay in, in some decks, just not great. And uh, same goes for Winter Squash. It's really, I'm putting it together with all the other freeze cards. So it's just okay. It's good in one deck. Just freeze decks. It dies very badly to Rolling Stone and Weed Sprays so against the Hardy class. This is a really, really bad card because it's so expensive and dies to one cost cards or to Field Clear uh, together with the rest of your cards. But in non against the non Hardy matchups, it's very good. Again, they're going to need an Exploding Fruitcake to really remove this. It's kind of like the only other card besides Rolling Stone and Weed Spray. And, Besides the Hardy class, basically, that can deal with this card. Locusorm, not a very good answer to a four-cost card. So, uh, it's, again, it's good. It's not the best deck in the game. It's very, very annoying. If this card goes unanswered, it's, it can literally take over games. Very weak to deadly zombies, because it's very expensive and dies to toxic waste imp and whatnot. But uh, it's viable. It's, it's viable. Can't say much more about Winter Squash. Oh, Witch Hazel. I, I, again, this used to have like one health. <laughs> now it has three. It hasn't really made this much better. It's too circumstantial. When you're playing control, you gotta have reliable removal. This The amount of potential this has, if you can protect it, is very, very high. But in order to protect this, this card should have team up so you can at least stick it behind things. I think that would actually possibly make this into a very good card, both in terms of tempo because you're removing their minions while, you know, every turn while you're, you know, it, this can remain protected. I think Team Up might actually be the answer for Witch Hazel, but in the meantime, it's too unreliable. It dies to Rolling Stone, dies to Weed Spray, dies to most most mid range removal cards. Will will have a good shot at removing Witch Hazel, and uh, it needs to sort. Of, when you play it, it gives your opponent an opportunity to respond to it before it does anything. It's not even like Winter Squash that you can play Winter Squash on turn five and immediately get value from it by playing Iceberg Lettuce. This you need to wait for the zombies always have a chance to respond to this unless they've committed all of their brains that turn. Uh, in order for Witch Hazel to be good. I really haven't found any decks where Witch Hazel is good, not in Mushroom decks, not in anything else. And unfortunately, this is going in F tier. It's 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 actually way too expensive and way too unreliable to really ever justify running it in a deck ever. All right. And Dice is Soldier Boy, thank you. All right, here is Bird of Paradise. Um, I'm going to end up giving this a, most of its points for being a fun card, not a competitive card. This isn't actually very competitive because if for a five cost card, it has low stats and doesn't do enough to help you win the game. Again, every card in your deck needs to contribute to a win condition. Every card in your deck has to contribute to that when you're playing on the highest level, lower level. I'm sure you think Bird of Paradise is great. So what's your win condition that Bird of Paradise fits into? Aggro, not a good aggro card. Very, very slow for turn five for an aggro deck. Way too expensive, way too low damage. Tempo, it's not a good tempo because it doesn't give you immediate stats. If this survives and doesn't die to Rocket Science, doesn't die to Fruitcake, doesn't die to any big removal card, which is cheaper than Bird of Paradise. If it does, it still just gives you one superpower, which I don't know, will maybe make up for like, for like two cost on average, let's say superpowers are basically two cost cards. So I guess at that point you've gotten, uh, it, it doesn't even, if you get that one superpower, you still have to actually spend one extra sun on that. So you're really only gaining one sun by playing Bird of Paradise. Maybe then it's a four cost four or five. I don't know. Uh, not really sure. So, it, the, in terms of fun value, we ran this in the Gangsta's Paradise deck. You can look that up on YouTube. It's very fun. You can ramp to this with Rose. That that was Nightcap. You can ramp to this with Rose, which is probably the best way of actually doing Bird of Paradise. Because, um, you know, getting this in earlier, like on turn five, this is way too slow. But if you can play this, let's say, on turn four, and then on turn five, you'll have those superpowers a little bit faster. The problem is, again, this doesn't work in aggro, tempo, or control, and really doesn't have a place in the game. So... Uh, competitively, this would actually be down around C and D, but because it's a fun card, I guess I'll give it a B. 
I'm really giving this and almost all of its points to be, end up in B B tier because because of its funness. It it really is. It really is. Um. It really is. Uh, what's it called? A uh, 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 not a very good competitive card. It's too expensive for what it does. Uh, just checking the chat for one second. All right, let's go. Next, fun synergy. All right, here's Jolly Holly again. It's 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 going in B with the rest. Of <laughs> it's not. I mean, you basically any deck you're running Winter Squash, you want to run Jolly Holly. It's good. It's a minion which remove things. It can sometimes remove two things. They have to play around it. It, it, you're really never going to see this in any deck that's not a um, that's not a freeze deck because it's so for a five cost card it's so unreliable only has one health I feel like if this had better stats like imagine if this was a four four like I feel like if it had actually some decent stats to stay on the field plus it gives you that tempo it freezes possibly two zombies not always still very circumstantial it might freeze zero I mean they might have no zombies on the field if they're playing control so um dies to sneeze dies to nibble it, it's it's stats are actually way too weak i'm actually going to put this in c tier because even in freeze decks you really don't need to have jolly holly it's sort of just as viable as similar similarly viable to uh to chili pepper even though i do think this is a pretty good inclusion in freeze decks it's not as essential as the other ones moving right along here's jumping bean so this is a this is actually a pretty good card because again if they play a five cost minion which i feel like turn five is like the time a lot of the the zombies are, are like playing type five and six is when they actually start playing their minions and playing the big tempo uh even if this removes something they played the turn before and then it chump locks something it's good this will remove very problematic untrickable cards uh from the field so you have that um like parasol and and friends uh, this is a good room again really anything they're running in the late game valkyrie stegosaurus even plank walk this is okay answers to these cards uh, it is a beans it does have the bean synergy it's and it also it gives you a lot of tempo because it puts a three two it's three two is decent stats does it doesn't make up for completely for its cost maybe not i put spring bean in b i think i'm just gonna put this in b as well <laughs> it's a lot of really just b cards um but yeah, this will answer again the turn five zombie that they played on the field, plus give you more stats. So it's a decent tempo card. This can be, if you don't have any other b better removal options, which there are, there's Shamrocket and Fruitcake, or not Shamrocket, not Fruitcake, but Shamrocket and uh, any other better better removal cards. If you don't have a better option, Jumping Bean is okay. Uh, Melon Pult is not a good card. Again, one of the most typical cards from the original Plants for Zombies, and they turn into trash. Five cost, three, four, splat. This is so outclassed. So outclassed by Snapdragon. I mean, you're literally sacrificing one health for one whole cost, which is the difference between a card costing four and costing five. It's just ridiculous. Great. This has fruit synergy. Congratulations. Because as a five cost card, this is not good. First of all, even by itself, even with no Snapdragon, just does not do enough. Three splash damage is not enough for turn five. Uh, plus the fact that it's outclassed by Snapdragon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're you're really not viable in any deck ever, and we're putting you in F tier. Very sad. Very very sad. How just every they <laughs> every typical card is like F tier approximately. Yeah, let's get an F in the chat for winter. Melon, which again, this was one of the most fun cards. Just lobbing the splash damage at your opponent. Man, this is so much fun in the original. Ugh, too bad. All right, here's shooting Starfruit. So this is a very overrated card. Guys, a five cost two two is not a good idea. It dies to every small removal card in the game. I imagine this being like a Lily of the Valley or a Doubled Mint, except that it costs five. It's so bad. The only way shooting Starfruit is going to be good is if you combo. You have to get a way to, for this to, to go on the field. Even on turn 5. Like, it, this is only going to be good on turn 5 if they play a bunch of small minions and don't leave over any brains in order to answer. They leave over one brain shooting Starfruit is typically a, still a really bad idea, let alone if they leave over two or three brains. So you don't want to be played the only if they play if if they play a bunch of small minions obviously this is great on turn five but if they play one big minion this is still useless because their big minion is going to do a lot of heat very often again just might get eight damage but it'll definitely get removed the next turn the only class I've really found the only hero I've really found this to be good with is Green Shadow because then you have two ways in the Mega Grow class 
of activating this. First is probably the worst way is with P patch. If you somehow your P patch survives turn four without getting removed on the field, which is unlikely, it's why it's unreliable. Then on turn five, you have a shooting star fruit, which is a five cost four four, which again does a ton of damage. If they do commit somehow that one guy, I mean, this will just OTK them. So it's okay with that. It's unreliable because again, even that turn still dies to rocket science. Uh, the best combo with Starfruit is probably going to be with Onion Rings. Because now Onion Rings, you've played Onion Rings, you got a lot of value from it. I mean, it's buffing hopefully a lot of other cards besides for Starfruit in your hand. Plus, now your Starfruit is just a 5 cost 4-4. Four, four. It's not like you're investing two cards into the Starfruit, like a whole Peat Patch and a whole Starfruit. You're investing one card into it. Uh, you just can then wait with your Starfruit. It doesn't have to be like while the Peat Patch is surviving. You just wait for the right opportunity. Be patient with this. If they pass turn six, do not play Starfruit. Just play your Brainana or whatever you have or play a whole bunch of little cards. Once they commit a whole bunch of brains and they're not going to be able to rocket sciences, then play your Shooting Starfruit on turn four. That's actually a very good strategy. Again, it's not you don't need Starfruit in Onion Rings, Green Shadow, even though it's a pretty good idea. You don't even run four. You run just two or three because you're not really going to end up playing more than one Shooting Starfruit per game. Uh, people who just think that you're going to play this like with Rose. People have told me, asked me to play this with Rose all the time. And like there's no, Rose has no way of making Shooting Starfruit be better than a 5 cost 2-2, two, two, which is horrible. Uh, the other little combo we did once with this is actually playing it together. Someone actually played this against me the other day with Pumpkin Shell. Pumpkin Shell, again, obviously better at surviving than Pea Patch. Plus now your Starfruit is a four cost, is a five cost. It's two minions, so it's really an eight cost. <laughs> Four six, which again it survives better than a four four, but still dies to fruitcake, still dies to rocket science. It, uh, it's just a very unreliable combo, and you can kind of only do that once they've committed. The, you know, once they've committed more 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 brains than they're than they're going to be able to remove this with. So, where are we going to put Starfruit? I think it's good in one deck. It's okay. Every once in a while, it's amazing. If it's against Huge Giganticus and Super Brains, it's great because they have no way of dealing with this. You can protect this with team up sometimes. I'll put it in C. It is it is better than the D tier cards. And again, it is very good with Onion Ring. So we'll just put it in C. It's sad. Ha Shmushroom, or Hammer Shroom, as I call it. Smushroom. <laughs> it's just crap. This card is so bad. 5 cost 5 4. I mean, for beginner players, when you need a 5 cost card to put in your deck, literally you just need something which costs 5. It's the only time you ever see Smushroom. We're not talking about beginner players like budget players. We're talking about beginner players like you just started the game within one week. Within one week, your Smushroom should not be in your deck anymore. This is so... <laughs> Let me smash. <laughs> but because of the Becky Let Me Smash meme, that's so good. You guys are meme lords. I'm actually putting this in freaking communist Russian cremation stations here because the only time you really see Smushroom is when you Molokale your Pine Clone into it and you're like, could I please get something better than a 5-4, please? You play like Astro, Astro, Shroom, Astro Shroom and you like get this. It's actually just such a crap card. Holy crap. It's going into the cremation station. Hum communist Hammer. Here's three, Peter. Ugh. Another card. One of the most fun cards from the original Plants vs. Zombies. This is such trash. This is such trash. First of all, Onion Rings combo, this is not as good as Starfruit because now it's a it's like a Starfruit extremely, extremely light. This is not good with Torchwood because even though Torchwood will make this do three damage and three lanes, you're still spending six sun and they can still remove one of these very easily that turn. It's too expensive. Don't try using this with Podfighter. Even Podfather decks, by the way, the ones I do run, hardly ever will run three Peter because you need your Podfather to survive. You play it on turn four, it survives turn four, and then you play three Peter and <laughs> feel uh, whoop de doo and then your three Peter will usually just die to a big removal card anyway. Um, this is a trap. Why couldn't they make three Peter good? Oh man, I feel like as a as like a three cost card, this would have been fine. Maybe a little bit less health. Well, let's say a three cost one three, and then you could actually use it effectively with Torchwood and maybe with your Podfathers and something like that. I don't think this would be OP costing three. Maybe having a little less health. It, it's it's too expensive for five. Your five cost cards are winning you the game. This card is never, never winning you the game. And this is actually going in freaking cremation station. It's so sad. It's so, ex it's not even as good. I feel like Cattail is even better than this. It's just a piece of trash. It's so bad. 
Now after all the trash, finally we're getting to a gem. This is actually one of the best cards in the entire game. This is so great. I mean, this in the this is the most anti-control card in existence. If they this plays around all their tricks, all their environments, this just wins games. You can put Brain Anne in almost any deck. It can be in aggro because it prevents them from using tricks to move your guys. So you can even play in aggro. You can definitely play it in tempo. You can definitely play it in control. This just wins the trick, the trickster matchup. This wins the, the any zombie deck that's relying on uh, on tricks. Obviously, it's a pretty bad matchup against Pogo, but even if Pogos are very reluctant to bounce Brainanas back in your hand because it will be useful down the line. Obviously, you can combo this with Rescue Radish to get it again. You can run, I, I don't know about running four Brain Nanas because it's a lot. You don't want your whole hand, especially in the early game, to be full of Brain Nanas because it is a very expensive card. But this is this this is actually one of the best cards in the game. And this is easily going in S tier. I really, really think Brain, this is really, really underrated in terms of what it does. Obviously, if you're again, and you're going against a Gravestone Pirate deck, this is not going to be a good matchup for that. So there are some times it can be, but... Even in those decks, very often, if they need to play an environment to win, they need to do something, you're going to be able, they need to remove your cards using their tricks. Brainana is just like, it, this is just such a sweeping answer to just so many things in the game. It's such a win condition card. You can really actually use this as a finisher because it just gives you, zombie. most of the good zombie decks do rely on the trick stage uh, to be playing a, a significant number of their cards, and this just completely knocks it out for one turn. Love it. Easy S tier. Plus, it has banana synergy. Who cares? Here's Sapling. This card is just too expensive. I, I used to like think for a long time this cost five because even at five, this wouldn't be that good. It's not a really good. Why is Weenie Beanie only C tier? <laughs> Such thank, cringe. Thank you so much for Sparkle. Yeah, I don't know. It should be an S tier. I, I agree. I guess we'll just put it in S tier just to make everyone happy. Oh my goodness, we did it, folks. We ended racism. Okay, Sapling. So it's six, it's stats are horrible. It makes the Sappy Place. Sappy Place technically is a four cost environment, I think. Uh, you some, every once in a while, you'll conjure it randomly uh, from something, but um, pretty rare. So this makes, the, the, the Sappy Place environment makes guys get three less, which again is not a very good late game environment. It's not very, you're not going to be able to answer your opponent's environments with this. Everyone, I mean, how are you, like, here's the main problem though with Sapling, like with every other card. What deck does this fit in? Is this a good control card for turn six? No, it's not. Uh, it could maybe remove a minion, maybe reduce. Is this a good win condition? Your six cost cards should be win condition cards, not like cards that just do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Is this going to be a good um aggro card nope good tempo card nope it really not a, not doesn't fit into any deck it's very very sad sapling uh should we put this in f it's it's so expensive to even at five this wouldn't be that good i'm sorry i'm putting you in f tier it it's it's very sad it looks like communist russia is off the bottom which is usually our goal by the end we want kind of communist russia to just be Woo! got it easy next all right. <laughs> Russia forever. La, 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 la. Okay, I'll stop. Tricorn. Uh, I've had a couple good Tricorn experiences, but for a six cost card, it is too expensive. The fact that it needs to be plant evolution to even be decently good is, is, is not a good idea. The problem is, again, you're spending two minions. So you're playing the six cost Tricorn plus an average of like a two cost minion combining them into one and then just dies to rocket science you know what i mean <laughs> or to fruitcake because it doesn't gain health like if this gained two health as well at least it would be immune to fruitcakes so then they would have to have rocket science or something but you're just spending so much into one card which even if this activates doing four and three lanes it is a lot but that's not going to like win you the game that turn so super super high risk super super high risk very mediocre reward. Tricorn's not a very every once in a while again this will be good. I guess you can combine it with Bacanalith. We've tried this before. It's really it's not not a very reliable strat. Uh, poor Tricorn. I think for budget players it could be a decent finisher. I, I really would put this on the highest level of the game. I put an F tier, but I think because for for budget players, since this is a rare, it can be a good finisher. Budget players not gonna have as much efficient removal necessarily as higher level players you can very often get away with this we did have like i think one good tricorn deck it was like okay it wasn't even that good 
I'll put it in D tier just for the budget value. But it's pretty bad. <laughs> ice, ice, ice Age Baby 6.0. All right, here's another freeze card. Uh, even in freeze decks, this card is... <laughs> I think this used to be like a 3-4, and then they turned into a 4-5 or something like that. Now it dies to rocket science. Congratulations. This is not a good card. I'll tell you why this is not good. The, the total value, if you, when you pull off Winter Melon, it's amazing. But the reason why you hardly ever pull off winter, a, a successful Winter Melon is that it doesn't do anything until the zombies already have a chance to respond to it. So if they've left over two brains, they fruitcake this card. If they've left over three, they can rocket science it. If this would like play on the field, four cost, four, five, and it would also immediately free something or something like that. It would at least get, do something like Cop Can. Cop Can is an amazing card because it does its ability immediately. It doesn't let the zombies respond to it. This, it, they respond to it. And again, on turn six, they can easily, any zombie deck will have an answer to Winter Melon on turn six. It's so sad. It used to be a four, four. I don't know. I think it used to have three attack way, way back in the day. Again, this is one of the most fun cards from the original, and it, it's almost unplayable. Every once in a while, again, every once in a while, you will see a Winter Melon just take over a game if they're trying to play Gargs in the late game, which is not a good idea. Winter Melon's a really good answer. Gargs aren't even that good. So a good deck, this is not going to be good. It, just including in your deck as a reliable card. I'm sorry, Winter Melon. We're putting you in F tier. It's very, very sad. It, there's really, even in freeze decks, there's almost no justification. Should I put it in D? just because sometimes it's so good maybe i'll put it in d it's probably it better it is better than these f tier cards it is better than the f tier i'll put it in d it's 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 one of the worst legendaries in the game still really really is oh speaking of legendary speaking of worst legendaries in the game dark matter dragon fruit is one of the best one of the best win condition cards in the game very simply this is Again, you're going to be using this in control decks. Don't try this in aggro or tempo. In control, I mean, I guess maybe tempo rows. Okay, it could be in tempo too if your tempo decks. You need a little bit of late game uh, just in case your tempo gets controlled. Now, here's why this is such a great late game card. is because if they go for zombies on turn 8, this is a great card because it has 6 damage, splash damage. So they play that plank walker. You can annihilate the plank walker by developing... A or and another minion while developing a really strong card yourself. So if they go for tricks on turn eight, they're, they're super, super screwed because this makes all their tricks cost six more. The only card that actually answers this on turn eight, there's two answers to this. One is Exploding Fruitcake, which again is a broken card. It really should cost three. The other answer is Pogo. Pogo is the bane to dark is the dragon is the dark matter dragon fruit slayer because if you play pogo if you if you're able to anticipate it's very easy to anticipate smarty decks that are running dragon because they're playing control it's turn eight just play your pogo they can't play the dragon fruit this turn you have actually you can play pogo plus something else which is great turn nine you can play another pogo a mixed up grave digger i mean it's just <laughs> it's just really 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 great answer. but th this card is literally one of the best win condition cards in the entire game um, and it's answered by like two cards <laughs> that really efficiently answer it. Uh, even like on turn nine, it trades one for one with the Shamrock, which sometimes with the Rocket Science, which sometimes is okay, especially if you have more tempo on the field than them. Um, it's it's whenever you see Dark Matter, if you can get your your Dark Matter Dragon Fruit in the game, your 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 win rate at that point goes up like to ninety percent. I mean, who? Every once in a while, we'll beat a guy who plays Dark Matter Dragon Fruit, but it's very, very rare. Really not a lot of good answers to this, and uh, this is easily easily going in S tier. Really one of the premier finishers in the game. This is almost the entire reason, in my mind, the entire reason to run the Smarty class. Unless you're going Beans, the two reasons to run Smarty are Brainana and Dragon. I mean, this is really... Uh, it re almost redeems the Smarty class as being a viable competitive class. Just you control with Rose, you can control with um, even with Citron and Beta Caratina, the ones that end with Dark Matter Dragon Fruit. Really, really good. All right, here's Great Zucchini. Ah, uh, this this is a little bit expensive for what it does. Um, because again, when you play Great Zucchini, your opponent still has access to the trick stage, unlike Dragon Fruit. And on turn nine. If they have teleport plus anything, <laughs> you're so dead. If they have removal cards, tricks, things that are going to be sort of getting them 
getting them ahead in their, you know, setting up maybe even the next turn. It's still got, This is not a horrible card. It's just so expensive. It's hard to get to turn nine. Again, like Dragon, first of all, costs less. So you're playing it a whole turn earlier, which is a lot in the late game. I mean, once you can start getting in turn eight, turn nine, the game's almost over. The zombies could win any turn. This... It, 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 it removes all it gets you so far ahead of tempo when you play this because again it just annihilates their entire field into useless garbage but it typically doesn't win you the game that turn so i would say even dragon fruit probably wins the game more often because it just makes them stuck and not able to do anything than great zucchini because now at least they can play something plus you still have a lot of minions on the field that are still going to be chump blocking your guys it's very unlikely to win so now you're going into turn 10 you got the 7-7 seven, seven in the water. It's a strong card. This very often just gets removed the turn you play it by a rocket science or something like that. So then you kind of just like reset the game and now you still are going to need other win condition take over. If your only win condition is Great Zucchini, you're typically not going to be able to win the game. You need to play this and then follow it up with something strong. So we're talking about a nine cost card that really relies on you having other win conditions in order to be viable. Again, a ramp to Grey Zucchini's fun. You can then play Molokale and turn this into a Cornucopia. It's actually just more of a gimmick card nowadays than it is actually good. Um, but Fry has Squash Synergy. Uh, I almost will give this points for, like, fun synergy, but uh, competitively, competitively, it's probably around a D or a C, fun-wise. I'm actually putting this in C because in terms of the actual decks, it's 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 super out class. Like maybe before Dark Matter Dragon Fruit, like back in set one, Great Zucchini probably would have gotten a little bit of a higher a higher rank. But now that Dark Matter Dragon Fruit, this is also extremely extremely outclassed by a card which is in its class and one cheaper. And it real this really is the better card by far. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna put that in in C tier. It's fun. It's not really viable on the highest level of the game. You can ramp to it with Rose. You kind of have to ramp to it because it's so expensive. It's just overall mad, but it's fun. I'll, I'll 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 keep it in C. All right, guys. So that was the Smarty tier list. Let me know uh, which creative ideas. Again, I'll be doing the Beastie class next, and then I'll be doing classes, and I'll be doing heroes, and I'll be doing tribes. Let me know if you have anything super creative that you'd like me to see. Maybe I'll. Uh, do you guys the favor of just shrinking this so you can kind of see the entire tier list at once, including the, uh, the cards which we have designated to go to Soviet Russia for us. Hope you guys enjoyed. That was really fun. That was the Smarty tier list. Peace. This is Fry.